So welcome everyone uh, to today's session, uh, Thursday, 23rd of July. My name is Tivi Lassum, I'm the GM for Student Engagement, and we are here with special guests from SEEK. Um, before we get into that, um, I'll just allow a few more people to, to trickle into the room. Um, but yes, Absolute today is um, a session on understanding the job market through the eyes of SEEK, uh, but also to, to potentially look at ways that to, be, to better utilize the service of SEEK to, to find um, that, that job that you want to apply for. So again, my name is Timmy Lasuma. I'm the GM for Student Engagement. I'm joined here by uh, Andrew from our engagement team to help us in the background. There is an uh, opportunity to ask questions through the Q&A. We will start the uh, a PowerPoint style, but there'll be definitely room for questions and discussions um, after that. We'll definitely leave some space based on last week's involvement. But before we actually kick off, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the land of the Yukal Walang clan or the Burongwang, where I'm actually currently hosting from in St Kilda today. I pay my respects to the elders past and present um, and recognise the strength, resilience and capacity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in this land. So again, welcome to those who have just come in. Uh, we're extremely lucky today to have a guest in the room with us, um, Georgia Young from, from SEEK. So G Georgia um, joined SEEK six, uh, six years ago after de de uh, deciding to make a, a career change to move away from her, uh, her career as a graphic designer. Uh, what better place to navigate a new career than working for Australia's leading employment and careers website. Um, as SEEK's a senior account manager for the government education in Victoria, um, actually Georgia looks after the University of Melbourne as an account, so it's just really lucky for us. Um, George is responsible for managing customer relationships and partnering with recruitment and HR teams to design an effective sourcing strategy. George is passionate about building long, straight-lasting customer relationships and working with organizations to drive better results through insight leads, discussion, effective training sessions, and keep customers up to date on how SIG's products and tools can support their recruitment. I mean, after spending the last two years working in Sydney, Georgia, Georgia is happy to be back home in Melbourne. Um, a passionate cook, uh, Georgia has enjoyed using some of the recent time spent at home to test and try new cake recipes, fantastic, and also started making fresh pasta at home. Well, Joe. So, um, fantastic, Georgia. Thank you so much again for joining us. And um, yeah, welcome to the session. Thank you so much, Tavita. It's really nice to be here. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for having me. And for joining in on the session today. From what I've heard, you've had some really great sessions in the in the lead up to this one. And um, there have been quite a lot of questions, I understand, that were not able to all be answered last time. So I definitely am going to leave a sufficient amount of time for us to have a bit of a discussion. I think um, the main purpose of, of today is to share with you some of the insights that we're seeing in the employment marketplace. I understand many of you um, will soon be transitioning from your studies into looking for careers. Um, and there is quite a lot going on in the market, a lot of uncertainty. So I think the first thing is I just want to emphasize with you that it, it, it is a challenging time for everybody at the minute. And if there is anything that we can do at SEEK to support you outside of the content that we're sharing today, please remember um, we are here for you. And um, I hope that the information that I cover off today is, is helpful. Are you ready for me to, to kick on through, Tavita? I think we're ready. Please go. Excellent. All right, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to share with you uh, to start off some insights into what we're seeing in the employment marketplace. Some of the things we'll have a look at over the next few pages are um, some of the supply and demand trends and how we've seen that they've changed since uh, COVID-19. Um, and I'm also going to share with you uh, at, at which the rates, the, the states, sorry, are, are recovering since uh, restrictions are being removed, just so you can get a bit of an understanding around what's happening across the country and also what's happening across different industries. So if we turn to our first page, there's a lot of detail here, so let me just talk you through it. What we're looking at here is um, the shift in supply and demand. So when we talk about supply, we're talking about the job ads and the demand is the candidate availability. So candidate availability here is the pink, uh, the pink line in the graph and the, um, the job ads is the, is the blue line. What we've done with this chart, we've, we've separated the data into four clear phases. So the first phase is the pre-COVID phase, which looks at the 27th of January to around the 28th of February. During this stage, we um, had heightened awareness of what was happening with COVID-19, but there weren't really any major restrictions. So the impacts that we were seeing on job ads and candidate behaviour was, was quite minimal. If we look at the next stage, which is kind of what we're calling the transition stage, 
which is in between uh, covers off all of March. This is when we did start to see that some of the restrictions were beginning to be ramped up across the state. What this meant um, from a job ad perspective is that we saw a, a considerably large fall um, and a drop in the number of ads that were being posted to seek. So this happened quite swiftly. And what came as a surprise to us, I suppose, is, is how swiftly it did happen. And by comparison, if we think about probably the, the last time we saw a shift like this, it was really around um, the GFC. And if we compare what's happened now to the GFC, the, the falls that we observed in the first three weeks of March, um, it actually took three months for us to see that type of shift during the GFC. So that kind of gives some insight into how quickly the job market did shift. If we move into the next phase, with phase sorry, which talks um, through uh, this, all of April, this is when restrictions were um, even further enforced and many businesses were forced to shut down, which meant that staff um, numbers were being reduced and people really needed to pivot to a different operating model, which meant going online or working from home. In this period, this is when we saw job ad volumes fall by 66%, which is um, what we're recording as the, the biggest drop during the crisis. If we now talk about what we're seeing in the post phase, this is when we have noticed to see a bit of an uplift and um, a bit of a road to recovery. So it's not all um, doom and gloom. We are starting to see things are recovering. They are recovering at a different pace and each state are, are moving in different ways, which we'll be able to see on the next page. But um, we're seeing a pretty strong correlation between the lifting of restrictions and the return to the labour demand. So job ads at the moment are currently 32% below where they were pre-COVID, which indicates what to us we've recovered about half of the way since the peak of the drop, which was at around that 66 figure that I mentioned before. So if we think about what's happened with the candidate um, activity, so we've seen a reduction in candidate in active candidates. So if we look at the ABS labour force participation rate, um, this fell significantly. Uh, and what's been evident is we've seen some big gaps here in between the participation of um, younger candidates and females. So there's been some stats in the market that we've been sharing at the moment around um, the inconsistencies with both uh, females and, and younger candidates. There's been a lot of competition among candidates. So this has been lifted given that there is less uh, availability of, of, of jobs in the, or new jobs coming to the market. But what we are seeing is that um, this is beginning to change as opportunities are returning. We are beginning to see a little bit more of a balance, which you can see the, the chart is beginning to kind of come together. So there is absolutely no doubt we have seen some significant shifts in the number of job ads that are being posted and the impact on candidates we are seeing um, and we have seen over the last three months. But things are beginning to ease. If we have a look, I spoke a little around how the states are all recovering uh, at different paces. Um, as well as different industries have been impacted at, at different paces as well. So if we look to the left hand side of the page, this is where you can see um, the different sectors and how they've been impacted. So the sectors that we're looking at here uh, cover off consumer services, construction, professional services, the public sector, industrial, and then on the very uh, right hand side of that chart, you can see the overall numbers. So what we're looking at here um, is uh, the blue chart or the blue uh, column rather, that shows you how much that, that particular sector dropped in comparison um, to pre-COVID. So what this is telling us, if we just look at the con consumer services, prior to COVID, the numbers that we saw or that we've seen during the COVID, um, the COVID period is 84% less than what we were seeing pre-COVID. The pink circle shows you where, what the recovery is, looks like. So at the very worst, we saw an impact of 84%. We're now seeing a 42% impact, which means things have increased by 22 points. So we are starting to see these sectors recover. And as you can see, they are recovering at different, um, different paces. I think what's really, really interesting here is what's happening on the right-hand side. 
So if we have a look and sorry, see what's George, happening. George, sorry, George, can I just interrupt? So we just want to say a couple of clarification questions just related to the of chart, if, if it's possible. Um, uh, we've got a, um, a question here, just uh, trying to clarify, what do you mean by professional services? Uh, so encompass in professional services, I'll have to double check exactly what's included in there. Um, so if you give me a, after this, I'll make sure that I, I pull it up. It is all included in another chart. That's a good question. Fantastic. And, and just almost slightly um, linked to that is a question around, you know, with the current COVID situation and further restrictions being reinstated, would you expect yeah. another significant drop in job availability and increase in candidates, candidates in the market? It's likely. If, if, if we can use the data that we've seen um, that we're looking at now, if we see a similar trend, it is likely that we could see that. Um, and what you'll see on, on the next page that I, send, um, that I show you, the chart shows how slow the recovery has been for Victoria and how that differs to the states that haven't had the restrictions in place that we have had here with the second wave. So yeah, it, it's a good call out and it is very likely. Okay. So looking at the states, um, definitely the infection caseload is a big consideration here, um, as well as the economic mix and the exposure to the services in each sector. But if we look at Victoria and New South Wales, um, they really wore the brunt of the infections. Um, and those economies were heavily reliant on the service sector, such as uh, education, hospitality and entertainment. So you can see the impacts on, Victor on Victoria, given the second wave the recovery in Victoria is a lot less. They were worst impacted with 72% less job ads on site, and we've only been able to recover by 22 points. Whereas states such as WA have had some really great recovery. You know, they're nearly back to where they were prior to COVID-19. So if we flick through to this, this is the one I was, the chart I was talking about that just kind of shows, I suppose, the impacts of, of lockdown and what that has meant um, to the jobs market. So we can see Victoria, which is the blue line at the very bottom, um, and then New South Wales, which is the pink. You can see those two states dropped the lowest um, and it, they've taken the longest to recover with Victoria having another downward spike. So looking at that, I would say um, for that question asked before, we may see another trend that follows Victoria for the other states, depending on what happens with infections across the country. Fantastic. So, I think so I think we've got another question around international students, but I think we can probably come back to that towards the end. Um, if that student just wants to hang back, um, it's about any information about the impact on international students, considering um, uh, how they can apply for part time or part time work. You know, so they can only work for 20 hours a week under certain conditions of their student visa. So I think the question is, do you have any information around those part time roles uh, being being made available? Mm, it's a good question. Um, we don't have any, I don't have any stats to talk to today around the different work types, but I think given the uh, point that you've raised around visas and limited hours being able to work, I think it would be a really useful for me, for me to maybe loop back with. So I'll write a note here around work types and what the trends are that we're seeing pre and post COVID um, and how the casual workforce or the part-time workforce is being impacted and if it's working, it's running at the same pace as the data I've shared today. That'd be great. Thanks, Georgia. Brilliant. So I think something to consider with these stats that we're looking at around the different sectors, which I will give clarification on uh, before the end of the session, and what's happening across the other states. Something I'd really encourage you to consider um, is looking at positions in other states because I don't really think geography is what we're seeing where you live doesn't really impact where you may work in the future. Um, uh, it's definitely a trend we're seeing from hires is the openness to consider or reconsider flexible working options. Um, it's definitely shifted the way that business, businesses are thinking about flexibility. We recently added a working from home um, or working from home into our location taxonomy. So as a candidate, if you're coming to seek and looking for a role and you want to be able to have the option to work from home, you can select your location as work from home. So even the fact that there's been enough demand for us to need to include that um, in our search capability really shows that the future of work and being needing to go into the office, depending on what happens with this, it may really be a permanent thing. 
So if there is opportunity for you to consider working for businesses who are in WA or who are in Queensland who may be recovering at a faster pace, I think it's definitely worth exploring. On the flip side of that, with the working from home, hirers can also choose when they're posting their ad, they can now choose to select that as an option. So I think there's a lot of power in that. Just it. Okay, so look, that was the data snapshot that I wanted to share with you. I think the, the real part that I want to jump into next is looking at um, how the SEEK tools and services um, can assist you in, in your job search. I understand that there's probably a lot of questions around the data and this really is just skimming the surface. So I'm more than happy um, if we want to collate any questions around specific data, if there's anything else as a group you'd like me to report back on, I'm more than happy to package something up and send it through for you all, all to share after the session. Right, thanks, Georgia. So let's have a look. Um, three key points that we're going to talk about. So uh, using Seek is really more than just a job board. Um, some tips to help you stand out in your job search and other ways that Seek can help you. I like to start these sessions uh, sharing with you the, the Seek purpose. Some think it's really cheesy, but I like to share it because it really is something that I truly believe in. As you said before, Tavita, I changed my career um, very after having working as a graphic designer and I found Seek. Um, so this really aligns with, with what I believe in. So at Seek, our purpose is to help people live more fulfilling and productive working lives and to help organisations succeed. Candidates are at the core of what we do. So supporting you at this time is so important. So I'm really, really happy to be sharing this information with you today. Seek has been in business for 23 years. And during that time, we've evolved the technology and services that we have to provide to Australian hirers and candidates. And we still are Australia's most visited employment site. When we analyze the Seek data to better understand online traffic, we see that overall, candidate traffic to Seek continues to grow. Um, there are now up to 40 million site visits per month um, in Australia, and there's up to an additional 4.2 million in New Zealand. Mobile applications and mobile web uh, visits account for 70% of our traffic share, and we expect to see this to continue to grow in the future. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if most of you are regularly accessing the SEEK website via your mobile device, so surely none of you are surprised by that statistic. You'd be shocked to know that a lot of our hirers still don't really understand the importance of mobile, so we're constantly having to really push that message. Um, at SEEK, we continue to invest in both the mobile experience, but also the proactive candidate attraction side. So we currently have 10 million searchable profiles and profiles is going to be one of the topics that I'm going to address with you today. because I think this is a really, really important um, tool to have in your um, kind of career tool, tool belt when you're looking for a new career. But firstly, I want to start off by talking through the SEEK career advice page. So we recently created a career advice portal, which is housed on the SEEK website via the homepage. Um, if you haven't already visited, if you haven't already visited this page, I suggest that you have a look after today's session. As many of the insights that I'll be referring to and referencing are from this page. So things that you might find here are um, consolidated resources and templates. Um, so for example, there's a resume builder, um, examples of how to structure a cover letter. We've also provided some shortcuts to working from home and what that means if you're doing working in a remote role. Um, and also there's a short list or, or a quick link to find jobs that have become available due to COVID-19. So it's a really, really good source of, of information. Um, sorry, I'm just having an issue transitioning. One second. There we go. Um, we know how overwhelming it can be when you're trying to navigate um, finding a new job, um, let alone what's happening at the moment. We also understand that COVID-19 has impacted us all in a variety of ways and to different degrees. So the career advice page surfaces highly relevant SEEK products, resources and advice to support job seekers through COVID-19 related needs and beyond. So let's have a quick look and see what is available for you in this section. There's three primary areas that you can access that I think are going to be really relevant um, when you're starting your, your job search. So the first one is about finding work. 
So this is where we can help candidates with their immediate needs to find work by showcasing the latest data, the most impactful tools, resources, content and products that are available to you. There's also a section in here on job loss, should you find yourself um, or any loved ones around you who are in that situation. And also a section on remote, remote working and just the introduction of working differently. Um, it's just crazy that we found out today in a, a SEEK uh, employment session that we've now been working at home for 100 days. I just never could have thought that that was going to be the case. But we've got all the information to try and help you through it. So it's a really good place to try and find that out. Each week we release new and unique career advice um, and it's all housed here. Um, so here are some of the topics that you might find once you stumble onto the career page. Um, so we've got things here, you can browse careers by industry and unlock some salary trends because this is always changing. Um, you can see what the in-demand transferable skills are that employers are looking for, which is really, really important to make sure that you're really highlighting that in your application uh, cover letter and, and resume. Um, and there's also a lot of blogs, videos and checklists as well as I mentioned before, resume and interview builders. So the list really goes on. There's so much that you can find here. Um, so I definitely recommend to, to go and check this out. Um, a lot of the information here is downloadable um, and it's really accessible on both mobile and desktop. So the page that I just wanna quickly show you an example of, um, this is an example of what it will look like if you were going to have a look and see um, some information on some salary trends. So let me just make sure I'm on the, say, on the correct page, pardon me. Here we go. So this is what it looks like if you were trying to um, look at the salary trends for a certain industry. Um, it gives you some insight into what the growth is look like, what it looks like across different roles. So we're just really trying to empower you and give you all the information accessible to you to find out what is um, a benchmark and what where you may be able to sit with it if it comes to a negotiation and making sure that um, your expectations are in line with an employer's expectations. Another great place um, to go when you're looking on the careers advice page is our SEEK video page. So this is, um, this is housed on the SEEK website and it's got some great video content that will help keep you informed on how to get the most out of the SEEK products and tools that we're talking about today. So in here, there'll be information about the SEEK profile, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, we also have some SEEK career advice videos with our in-house counsellor, Sabina Reid. Um, some really interesting stories on how she's assisted other people navigate the joys and challenges of work. In this reading blogs isn't necessarily your thing. These videos will really um, help you on the go to make sure that it's accessible and get all the information that you can. And they're quite fun. Um, we always try and make things uh, a little light and bright and add a bit of humour into our videos. So check them out. They're, uh, they're relatively new um, and I'm confident that they'll be able to help you if you do have any additional questions. So let's get into some of the tips to help you stand out. Welcome to the SEEK profile. Hopefully some of you may already have a SEEK profile, um, but just in case you don't or if you're not aware of the profile and how it works, um, I want to spend a few minutes just taking you through um, what it all looks like and most importantly, what information you need to include in here to make sure that you're being found when a hire is using this product to source text for candidates. So you have the ability to activate your profile um, and it can be searched by hirers and recruiters who are looking um, to, who are using a proactive search process for their hiring. This means that they can, use, they can search your profile using keywords and skills that are essential for their role, and then they can reach out and ask you if you're interested in having a conversation about or an opportunity. Um, we have a total of 10 million searchable profiles across Australia and New Zealand, and as a candidate, you're in full control of your profile. There's three different settings that you can create. Um, a standard profile means that you can be searched now system and hirers can connect with you um, by downloading your resume. They can send you a message or they can forward a job to you that they suggest that you read and, and maybe apply for. You can have a limited profile, which means you can be searched, but you're not giving a hirer access to your CV. 
And the third option is you can have a hidden profile. So this is useful when I suppose you've, you've been employed, you've found the job that you're looking for, and maybe you don't want to be contacted anymore. So I think it's really important just to make it clear that you're in control of how, who contacts you and if you want your profile to be turned on. I've got some tips though on how to get the most out of your fake profile. So the first one is ensure that your profile pro privacy is set to standard if you are wishing to be contacted. It's also really important to um, make sure that your location is in your profile because hirers and recruiters will use your location when they're searching. So ensure that you specify your preferred, your current location and even your preferred location to make sure that you're coming up in all the right searches. And the most important thing is make sure that your profile and your CV are both up to date and they're matching. Hirers go in and they'll use this system searching for keywords and buzzwords um, and certain technologies. So think about technologies that you have experience with, spoken languages, tech languages, CRMs, all of those things are really, really useful to add into your profile to make sure that um, a, a hirer can find you and find you really quickly because we know that speed to market is really important for hirers, particularly during COVID. So, Georgia, we've had a couple of questions come through about this particular to topic. Um, Great. So, so basically, I mean, a couple of students have come back and said, you know, what types of employers most commonly take a proactive approach by searching for staff using profiles? And I guess a linked mm -hmm. question, another student asked, like, are there any stats around, you know, what, organiz what percentage of organisations actually look for candidates in this, in this method? So, uh, the, look, the key user of, of proactive search is definitely recruitment agencies. Um, so, uh, I've worked with recruitment agencies at SEEK for four years, and I would say 97% of my previous portfolio were using this proactive search product. Wow. Um, now, working in the public sector and education, uptake isn't quite as high, but again, that comes down to an education piece. Also, a lot of um, I was going to say a lot of brands that maybe don't need to do the proactive search may be a bit hesitant. But the thing with proactive search is if you're not using a proactive search channel, you're only getting access to a small portion of the market and that's the active market. What's really important as a recruiter or a hire, a business that's hiring is that you're accessing everybody um, and the best way to do that is, is through here. So if you do have a profile um, or if you create one, you may be getting contacted a lot by recruitment agencies, but in saying that, there are definitely still lots of enterprise businesses and large corporations who are using proactive search processes within their, within their hiring. So I've got another question here. Um, I think it's a known, this is from a student, I think it's a known thing that such, that as much as 90% of the job market in Australia is hidden in inverted commas. Consequently, networking is more important and effective in job searches. How do you, how do job portals such as Seek compete with such a skewed ratio that you know? And will this trend change as the job market starts picking up? So I guess it's about you know it's about the networking uh, versus you know uh, having a, a portal, so a portal to, to be out there. And I guess you know is is it, I mean I mean anecdotally people talk about networking as one of the, the mm -hmm. good channels to, to, to securing uh, work. I mean how does that work for for job portals then, especially if if the job market starts to pick up again, does it sort of lessen the networking? Or, you know, I mean, I guess it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a general comp comment there from a student. Yeah. I guess some, some comments from you actually. Yeah, I think it's um, an interesting statement. Uh, look, networking definitely has its benefits. We know that the, the power of word of mouth, the power of being connected through mentors, through coaches, through previous employers, there is definitely, um, it's a powerful, powerful tool. But our stats and, and research shows us that what's more, in, in, what's more powerful is having a direct source or a source of truth when it comes to, um, from a hiring perspective, knowing that you're contacting people who are in fact looking for work and maybe not just a conversation. Um, so I think you mentioned a stat there around 90% of profiles or 90% of the market are, are hidden. Was that the right stat? Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's come from a student that you know, hidden the fact that it's the networks that that sort of you know, get you that that opportunity. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what that, that's what they're saying. Yeah, well, we to kind of share some stats more on this 
particular product. So as I said before, we've got 10 million searchable profiles. We have a total of 14 million profiles and four, so 4 million of those are kind of turned off and, and are choosing not to be contacted in the system. Um, and if we think about the total labour force, the Australian labour force, I think at the, it's somewhere around, I think it's somewhere around 16 million. So as a percentage of the Australian population, a considerable amount of Australians are using Seek and Seek Profile um, to be able to find their next career. Um, and we know that that really resonates with hirers. Um, so I think when it comes to job search, um, if you are more of a settled or a, pro or a monitoring candidate, then I think things like networking and conversations are where it's definitely um, powerful and there's real benefits to increasing your network when you're sitting in that type of candidate pool. But when you're an active candidate, what is most important is to be applying for jobs because we know that that's going to get the, qu the quickest turnaround to be able to ensure that we can connect you with people who are in fact recruiting. Okay, so I've just been, students come back and said it was actually last week, uh, one of our recruiters gave, gave that, that stat um, at, a job, oh. at, a, at a job fair. It was a recruiter that gave that stat at a job fair at university. So, okay, thank you. There students. you go. Thanks for clarification. And look, I know it's so confusing. You have all these different people, people talk to you from different businesses and everybody's sharing different stats. Something that's really great about our stats, you know, we've been in business for 23 years. The information, actually, no, yes, 23 years. Sorry, I had to check that. Um, and we've been capturing all this data. Um, we know a lot about candidates, a lot about behaviours and a lot about hiring. Um, so a lot of our data, it's Australian data, it's relevant data, and it's a first, it's a source of, first source of truth. Um, so if there is any other questions around um, data that's not quite matching up, please, again, send it through after and I'll do what I can to try and clarify anything. Thanks, thanks, George. Uh, okay, so profiles, definitely one of the most important tools to have um, when considering SEEK for your career journey. We spend a lot of time uh, trying to make sure that the information that we have in profiles is up to date um, because we know that this is really, really important for hirers. Um, so if there is one thing I can't stress enough, it's the importance of keeping your profile uh, up to date and complete. Um, so we send prompts to candidates to encourage them to make sure um, to fill in any gaps. So if you have got a profile and you're receiving any of these emails um, or if you do in the future, just to give you some insight into why we're capturing that, we know that hirers who find profiles where there's information missing are more likely to skip past that profile and they will prioritise profiles that have depth. Um, the ones that have the most information tend to be the profiles that are picked up and um, progress to have conversations about opportunities. I think that, that, that's, a, that's a, great, um, a great thing to mention about making sure your, your profile is, has some depth to it. We had a question here about should, should they be including things like language, skill and qualification um, and industry in a CV? I mean, that is, is that something the students should be doing? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So think about all of the information that you can include in terms like definitely um, language, tech languages, um, systems, processes, uh, qualifications, all of the more you can include in, in the profile, it will really assist you in, in coming up in searches. Fantastic. I have another question here. So we're sort of jumping around here. I don't want to distract no, from, from what, what you're talking about, but um, another one came in. How reliable are job postings by recruitment agencies where the hiring company's name is not disclosed? Um, how common mm -hmm. is it for people to find jobs through recruitment agencies? And is there mm -hmm. an advantage or disadvantage to this? Look, recruitment agencies are fantastic. Um, they really have a, a, a big role to play for um, hirers or hiring managers who either don't have the resources to be able to complete the hiring process themselves, or maybe who have done it previously and have made bad hires. So recruitment agencies, I know that it can sometimes come across as being maybe a little bit mistrusting when you see an ad on Seek and it has the recruitment agency's branding and the recruitment agency's name and they don't disclose who the, can or the client is. Um, my, my advice here is um, please don't let that be a put off for you. Um, if you're reading the ad detail and it sounds like it's a good fit for you, I would recommend applying and trying to have a conversation with the recruiter. The great thing about working with a recruiter is 
they are there to uh, support you just as much as they're there to support their client. So at the end of the day, the person that pays the recruitment agency is the, is the client, um, but they really are passionate about helping people find uh, jobs. And very, like our um, kind of purpose that I said before, we're very much aligned to how recruitment agencies work. So I think there are, there's always people who do business very well and maybe some out there who don't do it as well. My advice if you are looking to work with a recruiter is maybe find an agency who specialises in your industry or in your specialisation um, and partner with them because they'll work hard to find you a job which assists to take some of the heavy, heavy lifting off of you. So if anybody has any questions after this about recruitment agencies for their industry, um, I'm more than happy to do some research and send you through any recommendations. Fantastic. I mean, um, another question that's sort of um, linked to the profile is um, for people who've never worked in the Australian market before is, I mean, do you suggest it's such a, I mean, it's an open question, but look, do you suggest uh, it is appropriate to put a minimum wage to add to the profile? Like what's your minimum you would, you would be going for? Oh, and, 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 and I mean, I guess, sorry, and, and linked to that, I guess the question sort of talks about whether you should be saying minimum wage because I mean, I mean, how low should you go? to sort of get that first opportunity in Australia? Yeah, it's a good question. The way that we capture um, salary expectations in the SEEK profile, rather than a range or a minimum or a maximum, we just ask for one figure. So what I would suggest to do, I mean, it can be very tough. And I think a good place to start would be to look up what the, the salary expectation is for that particular role on the career advice page because salaries across different countries can definitely vary. Um, I think what's most important is we wanna make sure that if you are working in Australia for the first time, that you are getting paid what you deserve. So come to a reliable source like Seek where you can find out what the benchmarking is and try and use that as your gauge. I wouldn't recommend under underpricing yourself. I also wouldn't re recommend overpricing yourself too much because that can definitely, um, recruiters or hiring managers are usually pretty on to that. So think about the research um, and try and price yourself as, as best match that, that you can, which I understand can be tough. I think though, if you can include, if you are comfortable enough to include your salary expectation on your profile, it can be a real benefit because I know that recruiters and hiring managers do look for this um, to assist them in trying to work out who, who's the right group for them to be having a conversation with. Yeah, absolutely. And so we just had a follow-up question about um, the language on the CV with skills and certifications. Um, I think their frustration is they can't fit it on one page. Is it true that you should try and get everything on one page or what's the ideal number of pages to get onto a CV? Look, my CV I think is three or four pages. So including my referees, I think maybe I did get it down to two. Um, I think my advice there would be with the way that the technology um, kind of landscape is moving, many people, and particularly if we are continuing to talk about the SEEK profile, there's no pages as such because it's a, it's, it's a um, stream of information. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, try and keep it concise though. And I suppose my recommendation to try and, or suggestion to try and keep text or pages to a minimum is try not to duplicate things too much. If you're talking about one role where there's certain skills and they've also then been applied in your previous role, you can save some space by not repeating them. Um, but when it comes to the profile, the more the better um, and pages are not so much of a problem. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, perfect. So I'm glad to hear that there were a lot of questions about profile. It indicates to me that maybe not everybody had one or maybe you didn't know that it, it, it existed. So I would encourage you um, to go and, and create a profile, really spend some time making sure all the information is in there, attach your resume. And this applies for both Australian and international candidates because international candidates can still be found when an Australian business is doing a search through this portal. Fantastic. The next thing I want to talk to you about is um, another platform that is really important to have in your job seeker toolbox. It's a new seek technology called Certsy. So using Certsy, um, it's a highly uh, secure platform that job seekers can use to verify and store their work-related credentials. 
and then they can share those verified information, the verified information on Seek and on other platforms. So basically what this is, this is a platform that will verify that the information you're providing is in fact true. Some of this information that you can verify through the Certsy platform, <clears throat> pardon me, is right to work in Australia, which I know for many will um, be very useful. Um, your Australian driver's license, uh, if you've got certain skills, I think we've included like Microsoft Office because this is, it's a relatively new platform. So we've gone out with an initial uh, group of uh, verifications. Um, anybody in the healthcare system or who are in healthcare, we've added the um, APRA uh, verification. And most recently this week, we've just announced working with children into the verification. So CERTSI is another um, tool to consider. The way that this works, if you have a CERTSI verification, and if you, let's say you apply for a job on SEEK, and one of the questions is, what best describes your right to work in Australia? When you answer and say, I'm an Australian citizen, or I have a student visa, whatever that might be, we will verify your information through CERTSI, and on your application, you'll receive a super tick. So the hiring manager knows they don't need to, I suppose, verify that information, we've done the verification for them, which assists your application in progressing a bit faster. So this is a, a, new, um, a new kind of technology in the SEEK group, um, but one that's growing very, very quickly. Fantastic. All right, so let's go on to the last few pages um, or last few recommendations. So let's talk about recommendations so we have two different types of recommendations on seek one is the weekly roundup and one is the job alert if anybody um, on the the webinar has used seek before i'm sure that you've seen these emails before i just want to uh, i suppose talk about it a little quickly a, a little bit just to explain the difference between the two emails and the importance and how you can set them up to make sure you're not missing any opportunities so the first one on the left is the weekly roundup so the weekly roundup is an AI driven weekly email update. It includes recommended jobs, so up to 10 recommended jobs. Um, here you'll also find some industry insights. You'll find the number of listed jobs in your industry. And we also give you a bit of an insight into the number of people who have applied for jobs in your industry. So you can get a little bit of insight into what the competition might look like at the moment. So this one is driven by AI. What I find, so working with a range of different organisations, um, particularly when I used to work with recruitment agencies, if I went to go see a recruitment agency who specialises in healthcare, I'd do research and I'd be looking up healthcare roles. The next week, the weekly roundup would be suggesting healthcare roles to me. For me, this puts a smile on my face because it makes me realise that the AI is working. So we'll look at how you're using Seek, what information's in your profile, and we'll use that information to try and surface you the most relevant and the newest roles that we think you'll be interested in. The second one is the job mail. Job mail is a little different. It doesn't work on AI. Instead, you can set in your profile um, how you would like or what you would like us to send you, and we'll send you an email every day in that email, it will include up to 20 new jobs that match your criteria. So let's say you're interested in nursing jobs. Um, we'll send you all the relevant nursing jobs. You could set up searches for Sydney, um, New Zealand and Melbourne, and we'll include those for you. So the purpose of this is to make sure that you're really not missing any opportunity um, and that you can be really early in reading the ad and getting your application in to ensure that you're one of the early applicants. So recommendations and notifications through the job mail, um, I highly recommend setting these up if you haven't already. So just to clarify, they're not automatic. You have to, you have to go a little bit of a, a setup, setup phase to make sure you're getting these alerts. So the first one is automatic. Um, so once you've created your Seek profile, if you turn on the weekly roundup, we'll send that to you automatically. You don't need to do anything there, but we'll use the information from your Seek profile to make sure we're sending you relevant info. The second one, which is the job alert, it does require you to set up a saved search. And once you've set the saved search, then you can set and forget, and we'll send you these emails every day. Fantastic. All right, so we're down to the last few um, 
last few uh, little suggestions. Um, the next one I want to share with you is company reviews. So whilst we're, very, we're talking quite a lot at the moment around, um, I suppose, what's important to make sure that you stand out, I think what's also really important is to remember that job search isn't always just about you finding the right opportunity. Um, it's also about you making sure that the company fit matches what your expectations are. So we've created a page called the company review page. Um, and this aims to help candidates find relevant information about companies to ensure that they're making um, a better career decision on what their next step might be. So in here, you'll find um, 250,000 published reviews, um, over 20,000 different companies. Uh, and in here, you'll find candidates uh, insights about salary, uh, career development opportunities, work-life balance, um, diversity and equal opportunity, um, and what the working environment. So there's, there's a couple of examples. So besides the inf and um, it also provides sorry an overall rating. So I would suggest having a look on here if you have found an employer, if you're just trying to do some research on maybe who the the best employers are in Australia. Um, and what some of the previous experiences has been from real candidate uh, review, this is where you can find it also on the SEEK website. And here's a bit of an example. So as I said, it's not just about finding the right job, you're also looking for the right company. And that's why we've created a place where you can find and share trusted information about companies across Australia. So definitely have a look and check out the company reviews. I think from here you can also see a list of job ads if that company is hiring. So if you do find a, a business that you think um, really aligns with your values, um, you are able to uh, see a list of their ads directly from that page to save yourself some time um, from doing a separate search. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, now we have covered uh, SEEK job ads and the SEEK alert. Um, we've covered off the career advice, we've looked at profile, and we've also spoken about company reviews. We should hopefully now be in a position where the, the interview comes next. Um, so as daunting as that might be, we've also got some resources that can help guide you through that process. Um, and as we know at the moment, everything has kind of changed to working from home. So, if we have a look and see uh, some of the tips that we have that are housed for you on the careers advice page, let's just take a quick minute and talk through them. So the first one is um, my tip for interviewing from, from home is to be accessible. Um, we're using Zoom today, which is fantastic. We're already halfway there. I think you may be asked to use different platforms if you are interviewing. Um, so if we have got experience on Zoom, as I said, we've, we've got a big super tick there. Um, some people may still choose to just have a phone interview, um, but if you can be accessible um, by doing something like video, then I think that can definitely help you stand out. Think about the technology and the environment that you're in. Um, so once your interview time is set, do a couple of dummy runs um, beforehand so you can get familiar with the tech um, and think about the kind of location. I know, Tavita, you've got the beautiful uh, the background there happening. I've just chosen to keep my, my office. Um, I think my cat is in the background there. So oh, nice. be creative if you like <laughs> and do something that you're comfortable with. Um, thirdly, you know, your appearance and, and mindset can definitely play a big part in this. I have definitely been guilty at a lot of my Zoom meetings. I've been sitting in my trackies and um, I've had a beanie on because it's been very cold in Melbourne. Today, however, I have put makeup on probably for the first time in four weeks. Um, so uh, appearance and mindset can definitely play a big part in, in how you're perceived and how you come across in that video. Unfortunately, through video, we don't have the, the full um, opportunity to read someone's body language and all of those things that we probably take for granted in the op when we're face to face. It can sometimes be really pulled apart through a video. So um, have a think about how you want to present your personality um, and how you can still, um, I suppose, show your character that matches with, with the type of opportunity that you're applying for. And eye contact is really important. Sometimes it can be hard through video, but if you can do it, try and position your um, video uh, 
the self view as close as you can to the camera, which will really make sure that you're, it feels like you really are looking somebody straight in the eye. So there's a little bit of information on, on interviewing from home. I mean, I've just taken this from the careers advice page. There is so much more that you'll be able to get from there once you do get to this stage. Um, but just think about how you can adapt and be flexible given it will be highly likely that you might be interviewing through, through video. So practice, practice, practice. Um, would be my advice there. So quick checklists. Head to the Seek Career Advice page. Um, I think that there will be so much useful information that you'll be able to take away from, from that page. Um, have a look at the videos. If video is more your style of learning, there's a lot there that you'll be able to watch that will help you. Um, it might recap on some of the things that we've spoken about today, but there is a lot of content there for you to check out. Search for new opportunities on Seek. We still are seeing, um, as we saw from the, from the figures, whilst we did see a big drop, we are seeing states recover at different paces. Um, with still lots of jobs being advertised daily and lots of placements still being made. So make sure you are running your searches on Seek and then create a profile. Um, I think this is probably one of the most important tools to, to have at the moment. Uh, we are seeing a big, big shift in the number of people who are choosing to consider proactive sourcing. Um, so I think giving this one a go is really going to increase your chances of being found. And then finally, set up job alerts to make sure that any of the new ads that are relevant to your industry are being sent to you daily to make sure you don't miss out on any opportunities. So I know we've had some questions along the way. So hopefully that uh, was okay, Tavita, that I've only left just kind of 10 minutes with, with the Q&A and things that no, we had some throughout. That's, that's fine. Thank you, Georgia, for, for going through the presentation and showing us how to best put ourselves out there uh, through the SEEK website, especially with all the resources available and how employers sort of use your, your platform to, to, to look for candidates. Now I've got, um, I've got about eight questions that have been sitting patiently in the corner here and I've sort of been waiting for you to finish and I want to see if I can get through them um, as quickly as I can to, to get everyone. If we don't get around to your question today, guys, we will um, send the response back to you um, after the session and with, with George's help, we're just conscious of everyone's time. So um, one, of the, one of the questions that came in quite early actually was, do you also have any information about student placements? I mean, do you have any search tips? Because I think a lot of the students that have come to us have been talking about um, even internships or placements or something to help them build their experience to be able to apply for a job because they're probably a job they want, but they know they haven't got a certain skill that they're looking for. And I think the experience part is, um, is what they're so. So is there any, um, some tips yeah. you, can, you, you can give to that? I don't have any stats on um, student placements or internships, but we, I might be able to find something uh, maybe from one of our other partners. But something that I was actually going to suggest is looking at the SEEK volunteer website. So if you are looking to get experience um, and if you are finding it um, difficult to secure a role in the current climate, <clears throat> please have a look at SEEK volunteer. We've had an outstanding um, increase in the number of people who are showing interest in volunteer opportunities at the moment, which is fantastic. It's giving back to communities and, and people who need it most. But as a candidate, it is a really good opportunity for you to be getting some experience in a market that, that may be a little challenging. So I think volunteering um, or internships is a really, really good way to go. Um, if I can find any stats for you on the success of that, I'll be sure to share it. Fantastic, thank you. Um, which, which disciplines get the best positive results through SEEK? That's probably another stat related question. Um, do you have any disciplines that would, would sort of uh, are up there? I mean, we talk about disciplines in terms of um, study. So, you know, is it, is it mm. the, the, the law? Is it the engineering? Is it, you know, so if, if, if you've got any stats on what's peaking um, at, the, at the moment, that would be good. And would that be from a, um, like who's hiring or the number, highest number of, more from a hiring perspective or from a candidate perspective? I'd say for me, I read that as hiring. Um, if the student's still on the call, please um, let us know again through the chat, but um, I think it'd be the hiring. Uh, what disciplines yeah, are doing the best? Uh, I think the last stats that we had uh, talked to, um, where we're seeing growth uh, more in an industry level and a classification level if we think about SEEK taxonomy. So I can send that through to you. 
Um, I was going to share it today, but it was quite a lot of information. So from the top of my head, I think construction is coming back quite quickly. Um, community service and development is coming back quite quickly. So I'll send you the full breakdown um, across all of those industries after this session. That's, a, that's an easy one. Okay, fantastic. Um, uh, so I'm just trying to make sure I get these ones. I mean, there's quite, quite specific question here about um, literally linked to jobs or internships uh, for students um, studying geology. So I don't know if you have the answer to hand, and I wouldn't expect you to, but um, there's a question that's come through, and we obviously I'm happy for you to send through any data you have in relate to that. But if geology is actually, are there any jobs going for anyone from a geology background? Mm, I can find out for you and see what we can find. Um, yeah, let's see what the, the growth has looked like in that area. I don't know how micro I'll be able to get into that detail of geology um, or geographer, or geographer, geologist, sorry. Um, but I'll see what I can find. Great, thank you. Another one here. Um, is it possible for international students to get a job in the public sector or are there mm -hmm. any restrictions to hire them? It's a good question. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I will definitely be able to find that one out. Um, I don't, but I suppose the question is, do you have to be an Australian citizen or to work with the, for the Australian government? It's a good question. I'll find out for you. I've definitely got a, I should know that given I work with the, the public sector. So thank you for keeping me on my toes. I'll find out for you. I think, I mean, uh, as far as I know, I think it generally, I think you need to be, but we can, but I think some, some sub, sub um, departments, so maybe local councils, you don't need to be yeah. um, a, a citizen, but definitely I think if you do, especially for federal, I think there is some, some sort of restrictions there, but I will we'll wait yeah. for some, some information to come back from you. Thank you, Georgia. And again, that could be a good one. If you are looking to work for the, for the um, public sector, um, reaching out to, some, maybe a recruiter who specialises in government could be a good place to uh, find some of those questions if you're struggling to kind of connect with somebody within government. Um, if that person is still on the line, if they are able to specify what areas of government, I may be able to introduce you to somebody if you would like. Um, but I think that's a good one for us to unpack a bit more. So I've, yeah, I mean, I've, I mean, generally we've got some students saying, is it, is it okay if I, if I contact um, Georgia in a, through an email to, to ask some, uh, the, the, the type of question um, uh, later on. So I'm, I'm totally up to you, Georgia, but we can definitely put the information that you give to us on the, the web page that's related to this webinar and also um, we'll send out um, all the details to the rest of the participants by email just to make sure that everyone has, has had their, their question looked at. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm more than happy to take any other questions by email. Oh, thank you. Thank you, George. That's very kind. Um, so we have another question here about, you know, could you tell us more about the SEEK courses and their accreditations? So the SEEK courses that are structured through our SEEK learning. Um, so SEEK learning has gone through quite a few changes. Um, we really are more of a kind of research or kind of we play the part of a broker, I suppose or a facilitator where we will work with students to identify what careers, what their career aspiration is, and then we can give them suggestions on the universities um, or institutions that may be able to facilitate that learning. So we have a range of different learning partners. We don't do the, um, we don't facilitate the, the learnings ourselves. We're not an accredited, uh, an accredited learning uh, provider. Um, but what we have is partnerships with some um, Australian universities and TAFE, and we will, I suppose, connect those TAFEs or those institutions with careers, uh, with candidates, sorry, once we have found out um, what, they, what it is that they're wanting to study. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Thank you. Uh, we also had a, a question here earlier, which I can't see now, but I did, I did see it come up is, um, in, in terms of certainty, um, you know, how secure is it? I think that's one of the the, the, the questions in general, when you, especially when you're uploading uh, sensitive documents that are very personal to you, um, there yeah. is always going to be that question around um, data protection. So I don't know if you know off a hand or happy to send us more information about it's, it's, uh, how secure it is, would be absolutely appreciated. Yep, absolutely. And look, the, the premise of CERT is 100% built on the fact that it is secure um, because you're correct. We're asking you to upload in some situations 
a passport um, and very personal documents that if in the hands of the, of the wrong person could be quite dangerous. So security is absolutely um, uh, front of mind and the number one priority when it comes to CERTSI. I don't know how um, CERTSI kind of qualify or what the scale is when we talk about secure to not secure, um, but if there's any statement or any information that they can share with me around um, giving you some comfort in the measures that they go through to ensure that their platform is secure, I'm more than happy to share that. Again, I would suggest jumping on their website because I would say that a lot of that information uh, will be accessible via the, the CERTSI website as well. So to, to be clear, CERTSI is a partner of SEEK? So C, uh, CERTSI was, um, we acquired uh, CERTSI as a business. So we yep. now 100% own CERTSI. Um, so whilst they are their own business, we kind of refer to them as, as technology. So we integrate with the CERTSI technology, um, but you know, they have their own, uh, their own team. So in it's not a product as such that we have built, um, rather it's a, a business that, that we've acquired because we feel it really aligns well with um, the job journey and a lot of our other pro products and tools to make sure that people are able to connect with uh, the right candidates quickly. Fantastic, thank you. And I might just uh, go another. is there any search tips for graduates who are currently overseas? Because as you can imagine, a lot of students um, weren't able to return back to, um, mm -hmm. uh, to university uh, in Australia for, for, for the main reason, but um, some of our graduates are actually just graduated and now have to go back overseas anyway. So are there any search tips for them, for, for, for them when they're looking through the SEEK website? I don't feel the search tips um, would, would need to change. If you are using SEEK and if you are looking to secure a role that would enable you to return back to Australia, um, I would be thinking about if there is an opportunity maybe to search, I was going to mention, you know, if there was something in there around um, visa. Um, we don't have a field that will allow you to select, you're looking for an employer who would be willing to take on um, a, a student visa or, an or um, but they may use that somewhere in their text. So somebody might write that in an ad um, I suppose what I would be suggesting is setting up all of those alerts. It may mean that you may need to spend some extra time reading through the detail to see if there is any information around visas. Um, I think, look, I, there's no doubt it, it, it is a challenging time right now um, if, you, if, you aren't Australian, if you aren't an Australian citizen looking for work. But in saying that, I definitely do know, and I'm hearing from my customers, that they are still considering international um, applications. Um, it's just going to, I suppose, it's going to be a process of a bit of trial and error um, and setting up those job alerts. I definitely would say set up a profile. I think that that will really assist if you are an international um, candidate. Um, and just spending a bit more time trying to, to read through the job ad detail to check if there is anything called out from the beginning that stipulates that you do need to be an Australian citizen. If there is an opportunity, uh, if you've read an, an ad, it doesn't say anything about visa and if there is a contact number there, I would suggest trying to call the hiring manager or the recruiter to have a conversation with, you, with them. It's always going to um, assist you in standing out. And the same applies if you are applying for jobs and you're not hearing back after your application. We know how painful this can be. I've experienced it myself. Um, if you do have, what I would suggest doing in that case is, is picking up the phone if you haven't heard from them and trying to give them a call to try and ask for any feedback or try and see if they do have any other opportunities in the business that they feel aligned to your skill set. Not many candidates do this. So if you've got the confidence to do that and pick up the phone, again, it's really going to help you to, to stand out in the job search. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to try and look at one more minute uh, to go through this. I've got a couple of questions yeah, no around, around filtering. So um, is there a way you can um, use a filtering process to search for, for organisations that want to hire diverse culture or LGBTIQ um, or is, you know, even um, there's another filter question around uh, a filtering around internships that you know are looking for uh, student visa applicants or international students you know is there is there some is that mm. part of the platform not on the seek job search something that um another thing that i would would suggest that everybody has a look at is um it's another one of our um partners is 
uh, Grad Connection. So Grad Connection do have some of those filters. Um, so Grad Connection is a, a, I suppose, jobs platform similar to Seek, but it's built purely for advertisers who are looking to hire grads. So this is definitely uh, something I should have thought about earlier, given this is the market that we're talking about. But on there, they do have certain badges that an employer can have. So um, uh, things around um, uh, LGBTIQ, um, around disability. Um, if you're wanting to align yourself with a business who prioritise um, those opportunities, um, then I think Grad Connection is a really good place to look. Um, and particularly, they're in the business of, of, of hiring grads. Again, I can connect you with somebody from that team um, if you'd like to hear more from them and if you want any insights from the, what they're seeing in, in their world as well. That is, that'd be great. Maybe that could be the topic of another another webinar session. So, yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah, so, I'm sure so they'd love to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. And so, Georgia, I'm going to call it there. Um, students online, we've had 11 questions that are still open. Um, we are going to get them out to, to Georgia after this to see if she has the time to reply to them and we'll send them out to, to everyone that was on the, the call today. Um, we'll also put this uh, session um, up on our website to be able to refer to. Uh, and the slides, I think, George, you gave me permission to have them available if, if students want to thank you. Um, so on behalf of GSA, we couldn't go out and fill the questions, but we will address them. Thank you for everyone's time today. Thank you, Seek. Thank you, Georgia, for taking the time to be with us. Um, as GSA um, strives to support postgraduate students through transition to work initiatives, um, webinars like this is inviting industry experts to share with us their knowledge about what's going on in the market to pre pre better prepare you guys for uh, applying for the role or the best strategies for applying for roles, especially uh, with the current situation. So. Um, Georgia, is there anything else you wanted to, to say to, to close it out from, from your side? Look, the only thing for me is um, good luck. And as I said, there is definitely quite a lot of uncertainty at the moment. Um, but I have real confidence in the job market. I'm really confident that things will come back and, and begin to return to a stable position. Um, and I'm confident that each of you will find an opportunity that, that you're looking for. So stick with it. And if there's anything else that we can do to help you, um, please let me know uh, if there's another opportunity for us to engage one of the other teams that we spoke about today that you'd like to hear from in the future. Um, we'd really love to support you um, throughout the, the career journey. So thank you so much for, for having me and, and listening today. It's been great. Look, thanks again, everybody. Have a great afternoon and we'll see you next time.